Planting corn plot, a hybrid test plot. Okay. What are you testing? Well, in this part of it, we are testing for kernel hardness for the Azteca milling, the making flour for food corn. So you're putting two different hybrids in? Yeah, two hybrids at a time, planting six rows a piece. And that way with a 12 row corn head, we can shell half a through and it takes up a lot less space. Otherwise we would plant, it'd be more ideal to have 12 rows a piece, but we have too many numbers and not enough flat ground for that. This is Pioneer 1442 AM. It's our, uh, it's our check hybrid for this because it is already approved as an Azteca. A, it's a Azteca approved, it makes a flour that they like. Okay, so this is for uh, tortilla chips and stuff like that. And taco shells, yeah. Okay. This was May the 18th and it was the first corn that they had planted all season. They didn't have any other ground dry enough to plant, so even though it was taking a long time, it wasn't costing them much in productivity. I don't think Randall can claim much credit for how straight the rows are. His hands aren't even on the steering wheel. The machine uses GPS guidance while planting. If you remember our one row planter that we got for sweet corn, notice the similarities. In fact, this row unit from the outside is almost identical. Now it does have a newer, more expensive meter inside to help it plant more accurately. So first, Randall, they vacuum out what, what you just put in? Right, whatever's this, left over from this, what we poured in. This doesn't in. seem very productive. You put seed in on one end, you suck it out on the other. That's right. <laughs> but then we're putting something different in. Yeah, we put in two different, two more hybrids to go in there. So go we're, we're really not trying to test yield. Well, that is a byproduct of our test here. Okay. We will also weigh it at harvest time and get yield results too. The battery powered shop vac. We could probably get a whole range of Milwaukee tools that would all be compatible with the same batteries. No, 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 no. The finance committee okay. only gave Sounds permission good. for one, the portable shop vac. See, I was almost right. yielding good. on the shop vac because I was thinking of all the other tools that I might be able to get. Well, um, if it includes one of those heated the uh, jackets, the I'll take yeah, that. So, so shop vac. No, no, shop vac, just heated jacket. Not now. That's it? Or this grinder? Spot. Avoid that. They make, you know, come on, they, they make a little leak blow like, too. To I got a low, wet Who are you and why That's are you here? You want to avoid. You're costing me money. <laughs> Otherwise you can drive this is in the field and you can This is Matt. I'm in charge of this half of the plot. Randall's uh, in charge of that half of the plot. Okay, so okay. are we That's plotting fine. the whole 40 That's acres? Fine. Or just as far as it goes? 40. As far as it goes, but the rate we're going, it might be almost 40 yes. acres. Yes, yes. Dad, you have to do this right now. This is uh, one of the ones that they're submitting to be tested. Okay. So, Bex is right up by our house. But I don't know, we've always been pure pioneer. So seeing all this Bex on my property, I'm not sure, we'll have to see how that works out. So Matt, how many of these plots do you do? I do uh, four. I do a yellow and white in Indiana, and a yellow and white in Illinois, so we can because we have farmers in both states, and it spreads it out. And then we can compare the results. We use the same hybrids in both plots. Okay. So I'll compare all the yellow data from this plot to all the yellow data from my Indiana plot. Uh huh. And then this is a two-step process. We've got a hybrid list; they can only grow certain hybrids for us. Uh huh. So. First, this is the first step. We strip it. We look at the results. We run through the lab. They kind of dissect the corn, look at the starch and the color, a few other milling qualities. If we like what we see here, then we do a grow out, which is 40 acres and 5,000 bushel. And then we actually run that through the mill by itself. Okay. We'll clean the mill out and run it. If they like it, then then that number gets approved. It goes on my list, and then guys can plan it for us. Tucker. Okay. So it's like a two-year process. two-year process. Most of the hybrids don't make the first round. If they make the second round, then they're usually don't make the list. There's lots of times that we we'll plant this, we might take four hybrids off what we've done today, next year. Okay. Now, do you pay the producers to plant these plots? Uh, he gets free seed. He gets, the, he gets to keep all this corn. 
Okay. I get to, I just take back two pounds. Uh, if nothing else, he gets free seat. He gets to visit with us for a day. I don't know if he wants something. <laughs> Hey Troy, your first appearance on Tractor Time with Tim. Tractor. Yeah, you've not been around one of these yet. Very first time to the field. Yep. Yep. Wow, that's yep. awesome. He seems right at home already. <laughs> so yeah, it's his first time. We gotta go for a ride, don't we? Now if you look close in some of these scenes, you'll be able to see where the tiles were run in an angle. I'm not sure how they chose this exact pattern, but their overall challenge is to work with the elevation changes to get it all drained. As we hinted before, this field belongs to Christy and I. We purchased it in 1992. It's a square 40 acre field. That means it's a quarter mile long, quarter mile wide. And it's always had two challenges, drainage and drought. You would think those would be opposite, but turns out they're related. The soil doesn't accept water very well, therefore it's poorly drained. Then, when we need the water in the summer, the soil doesn't have it because, well, it didn't accept it when it had the opportunity. Those things are a lot of fun. Have you ever flown one? No. I've got a toy drone. It's about that big. I can torment the cat. But you can't hardly use it outside. It's, it's like just too much breeze. wind. Yeah, because I took it out one night. It's got a little flash of lights on it. It's about 9 o'clock. I'll try this real quick. I took it outside. I had it on the deck. I picked it up and it went. <laughs> right out in the cow pasture, so there I am in my sock feet looking for my little drone because I'm afraid the cows are going to step on it. <laughs> Tom, Randall, and my dad grow a lot of corn for Azteca. However, if you think about it, this field cannot be one of them. Remember, Matt said that none of these hybrids, other than the Czech hybrid, are approved for production at Azteca. So while it would be fun for me to say, run down to your local Taco Bell and try out some of the taco shells grown on our farm, this wouldn't be accurate. Instead, the output of this field will be hauled by rail to the Carolinas where it'll be used to feed chickens. So, Taco Bell or Chick-fil-A? Either way, you might be getting some of the output that Randall, Tom, and my dad Ray are producing. This is the oldest of two corn planters they have on the farm. They've had this planter since 1994. Having said that, a lot of the internals of the row units and many of the wear parts have been replaced multiple times. And as we said before, the seed meters have been updated to new models, and they've added a lot of technology to it as well. But from a distance, it still looks like the same machine they used back in 1994. For this year, yes. We rotate the pot between here and another field we got that's a relatively flat and consistent. You need a flat, consistent place to plant plot, okay. if, uh, ideally, anyway. With that new tile we got here, I think this will be more consistent than what it would have been a prior year. I think years. so too. We had a big water hole out here before that we had trouble with the stand and that kind of left things uneven. Yeah, seeing that you're able to drive through that water hole, I mean, it's you can see just a little bit of dark mm -hmm. on top, but my goodness, what a what an improvement. Major improvement, yes. Now, how how close did we put these tiles? The tile are on 40-foot centers. Okay. And there was some question as to whether this ground was going to perk enough to allow the water through it. Right. A lot of clay in this soil, and it that's always questionable. But it seems to sure be helping this year anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's... I hope it continues to work this well. <laughs> we've never been able to get on this field until nearly the end of the season. Right. It's usually one of the later ones. So, hey, good stuff. So will you put signs at the end of all the rows? Uh, Matt is riding on flags. Okay. He's riding the hybrids on the flags. So that way, if we don't have our paper with us, when we come to walk it whenever the corn's... Uh, you can go, go down to the end and find the flag to see which hybrid you're in. Now, Randall also has this all in GPS. He's recording which hybrid I'm on. Yeah, that's part of what takes me before I take off. I'm typing in the 2020 monitor, oh, okay. which what hybrids we're planting on one side and then one on the other. Okay. So the only times they need the flag is when they're walking out here in the field. When it comes time to harvest, they'll know just because of the GPS data. Yeah. Very high tech. <laughs> I like it. And you thought our gator sprayer demo was high tech. <laughs> okay, we got two decals this time. Uh-oh. 
This won't grow. We better replant it right now. <laughs> replant it before we get started? Yeah, waste it. Don't waste our time. <laughs> I'm not sure about this part. They're planting a brand of hybrid that my dad would not allow That's, on you're the going property. To the back. You know, I, I suppose it's like Ford and okay. Chevy and Two Deer and next. Kubota. The bags but over there? decalb not seed yet. was never allowed on our property. And they're planting it here. Dad always called it decob instead of decalb. Because when you harvested it, you got nothing but the cob. And I don't know how, my, how good it helps you some never of got them any are, seed. That was having fun anyway. Of course, anyway. he sold a competitive keeping us entertained hybrid, pioneer hybrids. Maybe slowing us down, but keeping it us entertained. Might have been a little biased. Might have been. Yeah. Okay. 65 on this side. 66 on the other side. So these are actually bags made for plots? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They're only 20,000 kernels where a big bag is 80. Okay. Okay, I want to be sure we get the right one in the right spot. $65.99 next. This one just needs to be put back on the truck and replaced with something that'll grow. <laughs> Sad part is, is it'll put the herd on the Pioneer corn. Will it? I bet. It ain't the same game as it used to be. That'll be fascinating to see. When I was young, Pioneer Hybrids and DeKalb were both independent companies. DeKalb was bought by Monsanto and Monsanto later merged with Syngenta. Pioneer was bought by DuPont, who then merged with Dow. And now, just a couple years later, Dow and DuPont have decided to split into three separate companies, naming the agriculture company Corteva. Whew! No longer small mom-and-pop businesses, are they? In any case, you're seeing just a portion of the testing and research that goes on to optimize these hybrids. With all this research, we've been able to double the average yields during my lifetime. This is stunning to me. Thing is, the population is growing rapidly too, so we have to continue to innovate to be able to feed ourselves. Okay, different topic. Notice this ground has been tilled. It's actually been disked a couple of times and field cultivated. While a lot of the crop is planted no-till, since this field had had tile installed last fall, we had to do some cleanup and leveling. It had received some rain on it since the last tillage, so that makes it easy to see the rows made by the planter. As he lifts the planter, you might notice that the ends sag a little bit. That allows the planter to maintain good soil contact when it's not quite level. Those wings can float up or down as necessary. Okay, Rando, you got more different hybrids to plant than we've got time to watch. About more than we got time to plant. <laughs> yeah, on a warm day like today, you could have had, what, 50 acres planted in the, in the time we planted seven here. Probably, but don't tell Granddad. Uh oh, he'll never he'll never <laughs> see this. That won't be a problem. Okay, <laughs> folks, I we'll try to provide you some I don't know some feedback on the results of this plot. Meanwhile, go back and check out our tiling video where we showed after the tile got put in and some of the cleanup we were doing there. And Randall, thanks for showing us this. This is good stuff. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I enjoy it. I like watching the corn hybrids grow during the summertime and get to watch the differences in them. Yeah, you know. People are passionate about different things. Randall pours over these stats to try to make sure that he can pick exactly the right hybrids for his property. Oh my goodness, it's very complicated, isn't it? A lot of people don't understand. They just see corn in a cornfield, but you don't realize how much difference there is and how many hundreds of corn varieties there are. And when you see corn, it, a lot of it looks the same from the outside. Field corn looks the same for driving by it by on the road. But there's so many different hybrids that have different characteristics that work better on dry soil and and rich soil and poor soil yeah. and, and uh, sand and 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 black soil. It's just so much difference. It's it's amazing. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with Tim. Tim. You having fun this morning? Yeah. Do you have any yet? No. Just keep working at it. They'll be there.